All right, and let's go live on Facebook. All right, hi everyone. We are live for episode number 10 of the Blossoming Into You show. Super excited and honored to have with me on here, Brooke from Texas. And yes. we're going to be talking about how to go from an emotional breakdown to breaking through, finding ourselves again in the midst of a dark time, which I believe is very relevant in what we're experiencing for humanity today, where so many things are happening, so much confusion, so much uncertainty and challenging times for many people. So if you're struggling, if you may be lost right now and just looking for some light in the dark in the end of the dark tunnel, maybe this will support you. So thanks for tuning in and welcome to the show, Brooke. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. You're so welcome. So excited to have you too. And thanks for your time. I think this topic, like I mentioned, it's so important. So thanks for creating the space and for, for us being together. We are creating permission for others to know that it's okay. It's okay to be in the dark. It's okay to go through the, the, the downs in life. So share with us more about your journey. How did you go from like an emotional breakdown to massive breakthroughs? Absolutely. Well, one thing I wanted to add to what you're saying about it's okay to be in the dark and go into the light is it's also okay to be human. That's one of the biggest things that I've had to teach myself is to also be human because so many of us are like fearful because the shame is constantly back here saying, you can't do this. You can't say that you, if you do this, then you're this. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to sit right here and do what it's telling me to do. So I say this perfect little thing. And I love the human part because that is what has allowed me to unravel like this weird ass goofy part, but it also gives other ladies permission. And it's the most beautiful thing, at least on my end to watch when someone else is acting weird and goofy. I'm like, that's your human side that deserves to be here with your soul and so forth. So yeah. <laughs> but in oh, little that's that's an understatement um I want to ask you ladies first off have you ever gone through something in life and you're like I don't know how to deal with this I don't know how to process this and so you don't you just kind of learn to cope with what it is and create that to kind of fit into your new reality if so drop a comment below do the heart reaction, whatever it is, let me know. And I know Nico is also like, yes, I have. Let us know we're not alone because that's what we need to feel like, okay, I can move forward and be okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where it started. It was back in, back in 2017. I had just got out of a toxic relationship and it wasn't the ending of that relationship that brought me to this point, but it was succumbing to what was left of me. I was living in daily fear, daily confusion. I was sliding down a quick slope of depression. And I remember just losing every side of who I thought that I was. And hindsight now, that's a beautiful blessing. But back then, like that's a scary moment when you lose who you thought you were. And so I didn't know how to process and go through what I had just went through. And so I didn't. And what I did was I binge watched Grey's Anatomy. And to the surface, it sounds funny, but like when you really think about it, I couldn't I, I couldn't take my reality that I was in. So I was finding a new reality that I could like actually breathe again. And to be completely truthful with you ladies, it worked for a little while. I, I remember me laughing with the show, looking forward to something, I had excitement again in life. I was crying with the show and everything. It was just so beautiful. But then there was something I started to notice. What happened during those quick bathroom breaks or waiting for the next show to roll over or even um, the moment that I woke up from it all? It was like everything, all those emotions and fears and confusion that I was trying so damn hard to run away from they were still right there. And in fact, they were intensifying and growing. And so I remember it was July 19th of 2017, 5 p.m. or so, middle of the day, something, I don't know. I was laying in beds already. And I can just remember flying up, sobbing, drenching my shirt in tears, and just thinking like, fuck, man, is this it for me? Like, is this new reality that I have? Is this what I'm supposed to just live for? Do I just need to learn how to go about that and kind of cut corners so that I don't rub up against that pain again? That day, thank the heavens, I reached out for help for a complete stranger. I was scrolling on social media. I could feel this girl's energy through my screen. And I reached out to her asking her, hey, is this it for me? 
I was asking a stranger to help guide me on what's possible for myself. I was such at a dark spot. I could not see past my next day. Thank God she was willing to help. And thank God I took the help she was willing to give. So July 23rd of 2017 is my growth day today that I re that I started living again. I started to feel again, started to have excitement again. And that is the day that has forever changed my life. And that is what has been so deeply implanted in my heart to help other women with is to create their growth day. There's such a dark and dreary time that you're like, well, man, what is left of this? So that's where it started. And then to kind of quickly go into this next section, once I took that help during that time frame is when I actually met my husband as well. So I went into like this year and some change, personal growth and development, but then it was right around January 2018. I started to notice that me and my husband, our tension was, was still there. And in fact, it was rising. And for two individuals who, you know, were going into that personal growth and development every single day, you would think that the tension would be either non-existent or very minuscule. But in fact, it was the complete opposite for us. It was literally rising every single day. And also our purpose that we were searching for so hard, nothing was coming to the surface. So we were hitting this point of like, something's not working. And I can remember January 2018, like I said, my husband, Justin, he asked me about my past relationship. And um, he had asked me previously about this. But my old belief was, you know, I got through this. It's the past. Like, let's just move forward. Like, we don't need to talk about it. And so I would give him enough information in the past when he would ask just to shut him up basically. And it worked, except this night, it did not work. For whatever reason, God forced him to force an answer out of me. And that night I sat there and I relived some of the scariest moments of my life. I sobbed like a baby in, from, in front of another human being. And I had the biggest release of my life. I felt like I could breathe again. I carry my emotional weight and things of that sort on my shoulders. It's like instantly, like I had this light feeling over me. And that night I became obsessed. I remember questioning if all of, if I did this in one night, imagine what I could do over, you know, a time frame of actually doing this every single day. And like I said, I became so obsessed with this and, and what it brought to me and to my life and to my husband and to others around me that it was just, it, it, it was definitely the purpose God put into me. And I know that you're starting to feel that as well with your business. And I think it's so beautiful because you can look, you can look at, since we're talking about women, you can look at a woman until she's in her purpose and doing what she's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So that is, yeah, like I said, that's what really brought me to this point. We now live in Texas. Um, just very blessed to be where we are based off of where we started, especially emotionally. Um, during that time, I learned some very bad habits and we've been able to break them through because of this emotional healing work. So I just kind of want to end in my section off at least on like one last question for you ladies. But Imagine just like that one thing, that thing that haunts you, that memory, that anxiety, that shame, whatever it is, it's kind of back here and controlling what you do and what you say. Imagine that just being gone. Imagine it not controlling you, not having this say so and this one hand up hand on you, controlling what you do and how you say and how you react. Imagine how different life would look and literally feel if you're able to take that one thing and just like throw it in the trash. That's what it did for me that one night. So there's like my little story. And um, I hope you ladies can kind of dive into that in a safe space tonight and just see what that feels like for you. So yes, that is. That's a beautiful share, Brooke. Thank you so much for your vulnerability. And I, I can feel your passion. I can feel how much you love, like how much this work has created a tremendous difference in your life. And I can feel how passionate you are in creating the same thing for other women out there and really speaking to the women listening because I, I, can, all, I can almost feel it with my heart that I know there's many of you out there who are in, that, in the middle of that darkness right now as you're listening, whatever that looks like for you. You know, it could be in relationships, maybe you're going through a really challenging times with your partner um, in the middle of the lockdowns or maybe you are finally coming to a place where there's no more distractions there's no more um, places yeah. to go parties to go to people to hang out with so you're being faced to sit with yourself and meeting yourself all the way so that can be really scary it can be scary as fuck like you know it can be very <laughs> painful it can be very painful so if that's you like if you're in the middle of that darkness really lean on 
people like Brooke, just witness her joy, witness her light, witness her radiance right now as we're speaking. And trusting that everything in life is transient. It's coming in, passing through moment by moment. And every experience is meant to come into our life to make us more whole. But that can only happen if we allowed it versus shove it down, reject it, say, I'm not okay with this. I don't like this. I don't want this. That's what keeps it stuck in our body. And that's what uh, Brooke, you mentioned beautifully about like this garbage in the back of our um, mind or our being that is uh, blocking, almost like seeing through a lens of distorted um, illusion, like distorted lens of reality. And that's really what how most of us are living our life. Everything that comes into our life, it's neutral. It's just an event. It's just an event unfolding in our experience. But we are seeing through all of these patterns, the lenses from our past, the unintegrated uh, wounds from our childhood. And then we are seeing our world through those lenses. And if you, we can dissolve those, if we can integrate those, that then we get to experience a whole new reality. Absolutely. So beautiful share from you, Brooke. And what would you say was your own journey of how did you heal? I, I hear a, a little bit of, of one of the big one was that you create a room and space for yourself to process your feeling, just letting yourself cry, letting yourself release it. But tell us more about your process. What works for you? Yeah, so the process is honestly very different. I can definitely go into my journey. Um, but what really kind of like kicked it in the butt for me and started to unravel a lot, especially this connection with my body, was I started this. Actually, it's funny because before all of this, I had a horrible time at staying like true to one thing. I don't know if any of you others can, can attest to that, but like I would start something on to the next, start something on to the next. So I lost so much trust with myself. So when I invested into my coach, which I did lack to mention, um, I invested into a coach after like a six month period of like a solo journey. I felt stuck, like I couldn't get any further. So I invested into a coach. She helped me go through a really deep healing journey. But during that, I can remember reaching out to her saying, hey, I want to start a challenge for multiple reasons, but the main one to show myself that I can stay true to my word. So I can begin to build that trust again for myself. And um so what I asked is that if we could do like a 40 day challenge of connecting into the journal every single day of what feels heaviest on my heart right now, little did I know that also really upped my healing journey because every single day I was sitting with that, I was sitting with actually what was going on in my heart, not just kind of like surface level, like I'm frustrated or I'm this, I'm that. Okay. But why do you feel like that? And once I would dive deep into that, I would then say, <clears throat> excuse me what changed the story meaning okay this is how you're feeling that's great you have this space you're you know it's validated it's justified but we're not going to stay there we've got to change the perspective on it because a lot of people including myself we can get so stuck in the story and what's going on and the pain that we never get out of it so then we're just sitting there sp spinning and spiraling and we just feel like well i know what's, what my problems are but i'm not getting anywhere we've got to change the story so that Doing that 40 day challenge of sitting with it every single day of what feels heavy on my heart, really allowing myself to express it and then changing the story was transformative. From there, I have lots of little of like goodies and tools that really helped me along the way. But that almost unraveled the aspects that I really needed to, that needed my love and attention, right? So that's kind of what what it did for myself. What about you though? I love I know you don't necessarily deal exactly with it, but I know you've done a shit ton of healing yourself. So I'd love to hear you personally have done um as well sure well i would love to share what's most present for me right now in my journey and what's been really working so well for my own healing and my own integration of the pain from the past is really just trust and surrender like oh. <laughs> yeah it's like the next level of spiritual growth you know a lot of us when we first started on this journey of healing and personal development can, we can 
be in so much control of what it looks like, of what it has to be like, oh, I got to think positive, being negative is not good, or I'm feeling this frustration right now. So that's not okay. So it's a lot of control happening, which yeah. is creating the suffering that I'm, yeah. I'm experiencing in my life. You know, the role itself is not the problem. It's our problem with what's going on. That's creating the problem, yeah. right? So, so just really trusting and surrendering with every moment, like, accepting that what's unfolding in front of me there's such beautiful divine like you know our planet has been our entire universe I, I was listening to Michael Singer's audible living from a place of surrender and he mentioned how it, it takes 13.8 billion years for whatever to unfold in front of me to come in front of me in this moment because that's how much time like the the universe has been expanding so like really looking at it from such a bigger picture understanding that it's not personal understanding that it's not about me it is just a moment unfolding in front of me and that i get to receive it i get to allow it to come through and surrendering and if i'm experiencing something getting triggered in me if i'm experiencing a sensation of maybe be a pain or rejection or fear, whatever that looks like. I am just breathing into that. I'm relaxing into it. I'm relaxing my heart. I'm relaxing my, my neck, my shoulder, my, my face, my entire body, and just breathing into it being a witness to what's coming up for me versus trying to control it, trying to manipulate it, saying it gets to be a certain way. I'm just witnessing it. I'm witnessing my experience. And that's really works for me. That's beautiful. It's actually, it's, it's ironic you kind of say that because it control, um, it is something that I have had to work on forever. And it is that, that beautiful balance of like trusting and surrendering. And it's like, why don't most of us allow that to happen? And it's because why do like, why, why do we have this like fear of like, we have to be in control. And a lot of it for myself and what I've learned is that it's, steer it's stemming back to like this lack of safety. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at least for myself, I know in my past relationship, I lost control. I knew what would happen. So it's like I, in my, in any other circumstance I could, I had to have that control because I would knew what would happen. I would stay safe. But in reality, like you said, it, I was bringing on my own suffering. And to this day, if, if I'm not careful, I can easily slip right back into that control pattern. So I think it's so beautiful you said that because it has absolutely been one of the biggest things that I've had to really work on so that I can just allow things to happen as they need to. I can, like you said, witness and notice what's happening and realizing that I'm not here to like tear it apart and understand exactly what's going on. Just notice it. And what sensations my body do I find maybe coming about? Because, and that's like my body's way of saying, Hey girlfriend, I need your attention. We got something going on. And then you get the blessing to go deeper into it and unravel that lesson. So yeah. I love Said that because it has been huge in my journey. <laughs> oh, I love to the Brooke mentioned that control stems from a lack of safety because I, I also had to <laughs> work on not loosening up that control. And I feel like a lot of ambitious women like ourselves, <laughs> we can tend to come from a place of massive control. It's that wounded masculine of like, we got to hustle for a war. We got to prove ourselves to someone because of that lack of safety that we didn't feel maybe growing up maybe in childhood so we that's why we have to control everything on the external so that we can feel something on the inside but yeah. um you know most of us are trying to solve an inner problem with external things but that's never yeah. gonna work that's never gonna work um and there was one thing that i wanted to share that you brought up but i'm losing it <laughs> um which Okay, so I'll just trust that it will come back. So this yeah. is me trusting and surrendering. <laughs> um, yeah, so so tell us more about what, what's most present for you now in your journey, Brooke? What's most alive for you? Um, I the, the, What just came to me, the biggest thing is really um, deepening into the relationship with my husband because of a lot of these emotional things that I had from the past and the control that we spoke on. Um, there's been a lot of retraining and relearning with that over the years to allow a different dynamic and dance between the, the both of us and allowing a deeper intimacy and love and things of that sort. I think that's just the biggest thing that I've really been deepening into allowing to happen, not controlling a certain way. And when I was in one of my journal sessions, what came to me was just accept. 
because sometimes I get so wound up in what it is that I don't just accept what it is. And like you said, we try to manipulate the view and manipulate what's going on. And then we fully lose focus and and a grasp on what it was, what it was supposed to be there for. Right. And so during moments that I find myself wanting to creep back into those old ways, do the same thing you do a, a big, deep belly breath. Usually I also pray to God for myself, but then I also just remember that word, accept, Mm -hmm. accept it, accept what is going on right now and Mm -hmm. allowing my body to guide. Does this need to be brought up with myself between Justin and I, or do I just need to fully accept what it is and stop trying to control what the hell's going on? So I think that is the biggest thing for myself um, and and going deeper into that conscious partnering. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I just love it when, when two beings come together and co-create and being each other's mirror, just seeing it's an opportunity, it's an invitation for you to get deeper with yourself every time when your partner does something that may bring up something in you. And um, one thing that you mentioned at the very beginning when you said that Justin was encouraging you, being there, diving deep with you about your previous relationship. Yeah. Um, one of the things that also a lot of us in the in the work of healing and in the work that we tend to do is that when we feel emotions come up like what we call the light in the dark right we always want to be in the light we want to feel good we want to feel joy we want to feel bliss but when the negative stuff the negative emotions come up that's when we repress it we reject it but an invitation for all of us is to what if when those things come up it's actually just trying to leave when the pain comes up, when we are experiencing the unease or the triggers, instead of going into fix it mode or going into control mode, or uh, how can I change this? How can I fix this? What tools can I use to get rid of it? That's even still that it's an, a form of rejection and a form of resistance. But what if we can just sit back and allow it to come up, trusting that this wants to come up because it, it's time to be released. So that's yeah. another level, layer of freedom that I am personally experiencing in my journey. And yeah. it's such a liberating way to live. I was going to say, it's transformative as hell when you can allow those tools and principles to come in. And I love how you keep saying, um, you know, like negative, because mm-hmm. I'm the same way. There's this whole, you know, vibe out there, positive vibes only, and only this and only that. And to some degree, I get it. You know, you don't want to be around someone who's constantly neg- negative and nagging and all of that. But to the larger degree, these negative thoughts and emotions have to happen for you to up level. And it's not even that it's negative. It's just trying to say, again, I need your attention. There's something going on. And when you can allow that safe space between yourself or you know a few select others, there's nothing about it that's negative. It's a part of showing your human side and saying, hey, I have a safe space and guess what? So do you. Let's create this safe environment together to deepen into what we need to deepen into, to release it, to move forward and overcome it, not just like, teeter-totter back and forth between, okay, can I say this? Should I not? You know what I mean? It's that it's that icky practice. So I love that you're saying like negative because it's not negative whatsoever. Yeah. People yeah. are so cool just to get deep into those emotions. And I get it. I've been there, but um, t- you'll eventually wake up one day once you hit that breakdown of like, oof, I've got to re I've got to go into these. Well, you know, Brooke, it's like the whole society, like society has taught us that it's not okay to cry. It's not okay to be anger. Like there's such a negative like association with those emotions. But I believe that all emotions are equal expressions of the divine. Like it's a beautiful heart. It's an instrument. It's an orchestra that gets to play all sorts of different notes and different frequencies. And we get to experience the bliss, the pleasure, but also the deep pain. And it's all perfect. It's all beautiful. It doesn't stay that way. It's not stuck on a specific note that it's playing, but it's just transient. It's all transient and we get to be fully alive in all of the experiences as it comes. And that's why I say I'd love to bring the human side and let other women know you get to be human. Because to me, that is what being human is. It's allowing every part of yourself to come alive, to be seen, to be heard. Whether it's with, you know, a shit ton of people or even just yourself or select few. It's just about being human because that's when your soul, and again, in my belief, that's when God starts to really speak through you and things begin to flow and just be completely different in your life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
So I just checked the time. It's like 11, 11 here, my time. Beautiful <laughs> synchronicity. <laughs> but, but I love it. Like when you say being human, like giving ourselves that permission to not be happy all the time, to not have it together all of the time and allowing what comes through to come through it's so much freedom we don't need the road to be a certain way like we don't need the 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 people the circumstances the situations to fit into a very specific mode or like a puzzle piece for us to feel okay what if we just feel okay with everything yeah. then then we we are free to fully experience everything absolutely without a doubt mm -hmm. so beautiful this conversation is giving me life. <laughs> it's feeding me. It's feeding my soul. And I hope our audience, the women tuning in or anyone tuning in on Facebook are experiencing this as well. Like as we're wrapping up, I really would love to like shine the light on you. Whoever is listening, whoever whoever is dedicating time as an act of self-love for you to tune into this way to go like way to go to dedicate time to listen to something that gives you life versus tuning into cnn or nb nb oh, i don't even know the news channel but um but like instead of listening tuning into the the the, the fears or the worst case scenario that can happen in, in our planet you did something that gave you life today so way to be way to go and i would like to open up the floor well before i do that i also want to acknowledge brooke like your presence, you being courageous to doing this deep work with yourself first and now creating space for other women to do this deep emotional healing. Thank you for all that you do. What you're doing, you're creating a better role, not only for us, but for my future children, for future kids. So thank you. Same goes to you, girlfriend. Yeah, same. I see all the healing you do and the sexual pleasure stuff you're getting into. I love it. So I like, same goes to you. Thank you deeply. Side note, it's so funny. I'm full disclosure, full transparency. I got an anal plug that came into the mail the other day. I've never used it and I'm very nervous of using it, but it's a part of the program that I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like Sherry, I have it there. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, anyways, totally sidetracking. Um, and now we have this image of anal plug in our audience mind. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, but uh, anyways, I want to ask, uh, get some feedback from the audience, you know, it could be Brooke's audience or my audience, whoever is tuning in, like, let us know if you would love for an opportunity to join me and Brooke, people like Brooke, amazing experts to come on Zoom live and have your questions answered. Let us know if that's something you would like that would really support you on your journey and be in our energy together and have real time support um, and just join us in the conversations join the party versus just being an observer and, and listening the, to the recording or the facebook live so please share it with us in the comments or reply back to the email when you get this in the email from me uh, we would love to hear and brooke do you have anything you would like to share on that no, other again, just thank you again. And I'm very excited. I, I, you know, I'm excited for our future collapse as well and the future Zoom if if women find it to be helpful. So yes, thank you again. This I, I loved having this. Awesome. So as you all know, there's so much more we can dive into. So we I would absolutely love to have Brooke back and we'll stay tuned for it. I, I'll most likely be doing the expert feature where you guys can come on and do a live Q&A. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.